what advice do you have for them as they're preparing maybe for the first time? I need to go present my work to some people who are very influential in the business. And I want to make sure that I'm not getting too much into the weeds, but sharing the information that the leadership's going to need to help make a decision. I highly recommend Toastmasters. If you have a local chapter of Toastmasters, join. It is worth your while because then other people can critique how you present. And you you do things that you may not even realize you're doing. Like for me, I would say, um, you know, every other word or I'd look down. Yeah, I was very uncomfortable presenting. Toastmasters is something that you'll have a helpful group of people uh, really um, giving you great suggestions on how to present. That's really good advice because that, that practice and getting that feedback is super helpful, especially for those. I mean, we all have blind spots. And yes. when people like share like, hey, did you know you're doing this when you talk? And that's kind of distracting. Yes. Yeah, I highly recommend Toastmasters. It's a great investment. I have found just been doing a podcast that I'm I'm very critical of myself. And so when I listen to my own words, I found part of my work has been um, because I, I haven't been doing, doing Toastmasters, but just driving in my car, I would just record myself talking about a subject. And then the painful part would be to listen to myself talk about that subject. And I would yeah. just, you know, what am I doing? And I could just hear all my ums and my mistakes along the way. But I found just by practicing that, talking out loud, and then listening back, which is painful, I've been getting better at it. But I think your point about doing it for real in front of other people, that's where you're going to hear even more feedback because you're going to hear things that you don't hear in yourself. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Um, and from, a, I, I think, a, an objective crowd. So, uh, yeah, that I think Toastmasters is great. Practicing with others if you can. But, you know, if you practice with your friends, maybe they don't want to tell you certain things. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't tried that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious, like, as you have prepared in the past to talk with leadership about um, the work you've done, are there things that you have learned along the way, things that maybe mistakes you've made when talking with leadership that you're like, okay, going forward, I'm going to try to avoid doing that thing. Because I know for me, like getting in the weeds, like I do that all the time. And I have to like stop myself from getting too much, too specific about things. Like even my emails to leaders sometimes, like, I'm like writing a chapter of a book. Like I do not need to be writing that much detail. Like no one has time for that. I, I care about it at that detail, but leadership doesn't need to get that much in the weeds. <laughs> right. Uh, so things I've learned, um, making uh, the presentation actionable, like there needs to be recommendations because they're looking for those. Okay. What should we do? You've presented these facts. Now what, what are our next steps? Um, also, when you're presenting, you need to make eye contact with the room. Uh, spend a few seconds looking at each person because uh, leadership may want to engage, interact, or share their own points. So I, I had the tendency to have my laptop in front of me and just stare at the laptop and go through my slides. You'll have the slides up here. And then it, it felt comfortable just to be in my little laptop. But yeah. someone pointed out to me that some of leadership wanted to talk to me and ask me things, but it didn't feel like I was open. So making eye contact is, is pretty critical when um, presenting to that audience. And also um, allowing, you know, um, booking the meeting, booking, setting a, a meeting with enough time because people are going to want to share their own piece. So uh, probably, you know, you have to take in mind who's there, maybe an hour. But it's it's not going to be a fast meeting, depending on what you're presenting. So that, those are other things. And, you know, they don't want to read your white paper. You don't need to go into a lot of detail about the, uh, the particular machine learning model and what features you use necessarily. It's, it's basically give, give some background, uh, a general idea of what you did. And, uh, you know, the issues involved, of course, and basically, what can we do? 
how can you know make it actionable? So they have takeaways, and uh, in just a few slides, uh, definitely don't like weigh people down with like thirty slides. Yeah. So it's not a dissertation defense. And even with my dissertation defense, my um, once I did my proposal, uh, my uh, advisor said, you, uh, "When you pr when you defend, don't go into all the detail about the models." So I talked about the model, the features, uh, things that I cleaned up. Uh, I went like I wanted to talk about everything, and I think I started putting people to sleep with all that. <laughs> So it, it's, it's like not everyone wants to hear, like you said, all those details. Get, it's almost like get to the point. Mm. And it's not, not a knock against your work at all. It's just it's that audience, uh, we, we want to hear the bottom line in a way. Thank you so much for checking out this clip from the Data Talk podcast. To watch the full episode, you can either go to the Experian blog. The URL is experian.com slash datatalk, or you can click on the link which is found in the description of this video.